Hank Williams the third. We're here to talk about uh, merchandising and how Chopper does it. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's got the upper hand, that's for sure. Yes. It's uh, interesting to see the, the heritage that you've had over the years. Uh, you know, is that something that you think has worked for you or worked against you as a performer? It's a little bit of both. I don't think it, it doesn't matter if you're Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Frank Sinatra Jr. If you're involved with somebody that has a famous father or a famous grandfather, there's expectations people have of you. And uh, in the end, you're being yourself, and you got to satisfy yourself. And some of those people get let down. Oh, he's not Hank Williams, or Hank Williams is rolling over in his grave because he's saying some cuss words and playing heavy metal at the end of his show. Um, I, it's just it, it's a blessing and a curse. But at least I've I've created my own niche, and I haven't just been a country singer we are much more than that and i'm not riding the coattails i'm out there fighting for us as hank three yeah. and 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 doing what we do and we finally got a finally got a new record out there and uh we're just going to be beating that road down we're trying hard to get over y'all's way we have, we've been talking about it for a couple years my friend dale watson he's made it over there and i think wayne the train hancock's made it over and uh now we're just going to be out working like we've always done we've been beating this road up for over 12 years and got another 25 easy to go yeah sure well i guess you know from a a, a guitar and a metal perspective i mean your dad even pulled out the electric guitar he he, he rocked out didn't he so yes. he, he must have scared a few uh, williams uh, fans off in yeah. the early days. oh yeah he went through that same thing he was yeah. forced out on stage and told to act like his daddy yeah. and uh he found rock and randall that was when he was you know started getting the uh electric out and then he started hanging out more with Johnny Cash and Waylon and Leonard Skinner and the Allman Brothers and created his own southern kind of southern rock that he does and uh, you know it's it's just one of them things you gotta you gotta do what you do and and not trying to rip nobody off we're just trying to be ourselves yeah now you've done something that uh, is, is quite unique for the family you've actually uh, recorded one of your grandfather's songs that's the first time on our release. I wanted at least to get out there on the road for a long time and let people know that, you know, we have our own sound, we have our own style, and uh, that's the first time I have, you know, put a Hank Williams song on our record. Yeah. We, we've done a couple in the past on other tribute records, but this one's just uh, recorded on a tape recorder, me and an acoustic, and... Uh, and we, at least we got the big train leading into it. Yeah, because uh, fill us in on the story with the um, with the uh, rights to the Hank Williams uh, material. It's only recently returned to the family, hasn't it? Uh, honestly, I don't even keep up with it. I mean, that's something Hank Jr. would know more about. I, mm. I don't see any of that money, and um, I, I just don't keep up with it. That'd be between him and Jet. But I did hear that, that what you just said has been going on. Yeah. You know, something just happened. Yeah. So... Um, uh, yeah, I guess it's it's just one of them things. Yeah. <laughs> what you've done is uh, with the new album now. Uh, fill us in on, the, on on putting the two records set out, and particularly the uh, the second disc. It's very very interesting. Very okay. Innovative. Well, the, the major labels they only want ten songs, and they've been sitting on us for almost four years. So we hey, I wanted to get as many songs as I could out there. The first CDs, thirteen songs, done the right way with all the pickers and players and all that stuff on it. The second CD was my way of having fun. Uh, got some ambient sounds, um, and it was, it's real stripped down. It goes back to it's mainly just me and my acoustic on a lot of the songs on a tape recorder, and on a couple songs it's me and the band. But uh, it, it's it's definitely something for people that are coming down. Uh, maybe you know, f f for some of the stoners that's coming down, or somebody that's stuck in traffic that needs to unwind or get rid of some anxiety in their chest. Uh, and it's uh, got a little bit more of a buzz than I thought. I did it just for fun for the true fans that are bored and will sit there and fast forward through it and listen to it over and over. But uh, there's actually a couple of songs that people are really enjoying off of that, that second part of the record. Yeah. And do you get to perform that live as well? I, 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 well, our live show is an hour and a 15 to an hour and a half of country and then an hour of metal every night and I never walk out with a set list. I do the same four songs at the beginning and then it's whoever heckles me or if somebody says 87 Southbound or Whiskey Weed and Women or you know I just 
try to play to the crowd a little bit. Um, but we do a couple of songs on the new record. Uh, uh, I like keeping the energy up. I hate, for right now, I don't like to slow it down too much. And a lot of those songs are kind of slow on the second part of the record. So right now I'm trying to keep the energy going, the kids moving. And uh, here soon I might be performing some more of the, uh, the slower songs. Have you ever had the opportunity to perform at the Ryman Theatre? Many times, yeah? yes. Many times. We've been at, the, uh, been at the original Ryman, and I still give them grief today about having a Hank Williams impersonator at the door, but him not being a member. Is that and, really? Oh, no, it's true. He's not a member of the Grand Ole Opry, and if they're going to rip his name off and have plays that are about Hank Williams and having an impersonator at the door, the last time I was on that stage, I said, I, you know, it, like it's going to make a difference, but it might. But I said, I'm not coming back in this place until they make Hank Williams a member because if you're going to rip his name off still to this day, that's the least you could do. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, much respect. It's the mother church of country music, but uh, they need to get their uh, morals right. Yeah. Did you, your grandfather started it, though, didn't he? He didn't start it. A radio station started it. He was just part of it at the beginning and was a very big part of it. And uh, ended up getting kicked off because of his alcohol habits. But he's dead and gone now, and he can't make nobody mad no more. Mm. And... Uh, uh, Jimmy Martin, the king of bluegrass. They should have made him a member, and they never did. He was born and raised in Tennessee and was one of the best entertainers out there, and he wasn't a member e either. So uh, the Grand Ole Opry is unfortunately losing its roots. Yeah, well, Hank, uh, good to uh, talk to you. We hope to see you around the planet over the next uh, few months. Oh, well, we're, we are working hard to get there. We really are. We, we cannot wait. Yeah, Hank Williams, the third. Ah.